The Vikings have appeared in many of our stories, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about how they were able to have so much influence. The Vikings were warriors, explorers, and traders, and they were very powerful in Europe from the 8th to the 11th century. They set sail from their homes in Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, and voyaged across the North Sea, where they discovered Iceland and Greenland. They traveled the Baltic Sea and into Russia. They went overland into Baghdad, Jerusalem, and Istanbul. It is even said that a Viking named Leif the Lucky was the first European to set foot on North America in the year 1001. Wherever they went, the Vikings raided that place and took away anything of value that they could find, gold, silver, and even slaves. Then they would take those goods to some other place and trade them. Sometimes they liked a place enough that they took over the land and stayed put, forcing the people there to make way for them. The people of Europe heard the legends of the Vikings and were afraid of them. We know this because sometimes a Christian monk would write down a story of a Viking assault on a town. Some Vikings had frightening names like Ivar the Boneless, who invaded England in 869 and killed King Edmund, or Eric Bloodaxe, who was the last Viking to rule in the northern part of England. There is a great deal we don't know about the Vikings because they didn't write things down. But about 150 years ago, archaeologists began to investigate the graves of the Viking. And there was a lot of evidence of their trading in those graves because the Vikings were often buried inside their ships along with many of their belongings. And the ship you are looking at now is one of those burial ships. In these graves, people have discovered silk from China and paint that might have come from Indian indigo or Middle Eastern lapis lazuli. So we can see from these discoveries how far away the Vikings traveled and traded. Now, how do you suppose the Vikings were able to become so powerful? Wherever they went, it seemed they were just able to take what they wanted. Well, the Vikings were not simply wild barbarians. They were skilled craftsmen, and one very special skill they had was shipbuilding. They were also excellent navigators. And it was because of their special ships that they were able to travel quickly to places and surprise the people there. The ships were large and fast and had large sails woven out of wool and colored with bright square patterns. The sail would be hoisted up in the open sea, allowing them to sail with or against the wind. During a storm, the crew could spread the sail out like a tent to protect themselves. When there was no wind, they could use the large oars to power the ship. A large oar used for steering was fixed on the right side of the rear of the ship, the stern. The oar was called the steerboard, and that is how the right side of a ship became known as the starboard side. In 1880, a ship was unearthed and named for the farm where it was discovered, the Gokstad. Inside the ship was the skeleton of a man surrounded by his worldly possessions, including his clothing, his horses, and a peacock. The Vikings believed that when they died, they would be able to take the items that were buried with them to their heaven, which they called Valhalla. This grand 76 foot long ship showed the craftsmanship of the Viking shipbuilders. It would have held 32 men and was steered by a long oar. The keel, which is the long piece of wood that runs along the bottom of the boat, to keep it from sliding sideways in the wind was made of one single piece of oak that must have come from a tree at least 82 feet tall. After studying the Gokstad, a replica was built and it was sailed from Norway to Chicago for the 1893 World's Fair. For a long time, archeologists assumed that all Viking ships were like the Gokstad. 
But in 1962, there was an amazing discovery. Five Viking ships were discovered, piled one on top of the other, at the bottom of a fjord near the Danish town of Roskilde. They called them the Skuldelev ships after a nearby town. These ships were very different from one another. One was a fishing boat. Two of them were cargo ships that allowed only a few men to carry great loads. And one was a warship that could carry as many as 30 people. The fifth ship was the most amazing. It was 98 feet long and only 12 feet wide and could carry as many as 65 armed men. This ship would have allowed the Vikings to approach land very quickly and unload a ship full of fierce warriors on the unsuspecting people there. It is no wonder that the Vikings were able to take the world by storm. Researchers decided to test the seaworthiness of this mighty warship. Using the same methods and tools that the Vikings would have used, shipbuilders built a perfect replica of the ship found at the bottom of the fjord. It took them four years to craft the ship from oak planks using axes, wedges, and hammers. But in 2006, the sea stallion was ready to be sailed on the open sea, and this is a picture of it. There have already been several voyages lasting for weeks during which researchers have been able to learn a great deal about the lives of the Vikings. One question that is often asked is, did Vikings really wear helmets with horns on them? Well, probably not. The helmets that they actually wore are more like the one in the upper right corner, which is an actual artifact, um, and not like the one in the picture um, on the model. Um, the reason that we have this belief that they wore helmets with horns stems from some stories and pictures that were made in the 1800s when artists imagined the Vikings, they wanted to put some pictures along with these amazing stories they were hearing about the Vikings. And so to make them seem even more fearsome, they it, it imagined them with these horns on their helmets. And then also in the 1800s, a very popular opera by Richard Wagner um, included a character who was a Viking who wore a helmet with horns on it, and the image really stuck. And in fact, we still see it today, um, perhaps being sported by the um, professional sports teams of a very fine state. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about how the Vikings were able to conquer, trade, and influence the cultures and languages of people far across the globe. Thank you for joining me today.